So if you could address the background of this patient population with stable coronary disease and why until now it's only been aspirin that has been right, used right. for the thrombotic risk of these patients. Well, in the past we've tried to improve on aspirin, firstly in the Capri trial by uh, testing clopidogrel, a marginal benefit. We did the Charisma trial, uh, Deepak Bhatt and Eric Topol, looking at the combination of aspirin and clopidogrel versus aspirin. Overall, a neutral trial result. Now, they're all important trials, but no benefit. We then looked at adding warfarin to aspirin, and there are a whole bunch of warfarin trials. A benefit, but a big excess of bleeding. Uh, the recent DAP trials, the dual antiplatelet therapy trials in people with coronary disease, a mixed picture for the elective patient who was stented, no benefit after about six months. For the post-myocardial infarction patient, there is a benefit continued longer term, but importantly, we're not seeing that clear effect on mortality. So the field has progressed, but aspirin, according to the guidelines, for the long-term treatment remains the foundation of care. I saw a recent paper in the, in the American Journal of Cardiology that about 70% of people with stable cardiovascular disease in the United States are getting aspirin. So the ATLAS uh, ACS TIMI 51 trial, uh, very carefully done trial, uh, showed that if you add 2.5 milligrams twice daily of rivaroxaban on top of antiplatelet therapy, you get a reduction in non-fatal cardiovascular events, but also a mortality benefit. Now there were a few issues with that trial that led the regulators in the United States not to uh, approve it. it. There was approval in Europe, now with a second trial which shows very consistent results. I'm thinking it's time to revisit that first trial to look at the two in parallel in combination. This would offer a treatment strategy starting immediately post ACS and extending into the long term. So you think that um, the anti-10A drugs <clears throat> offer a way of treating these, these patients, both the acute and the stable patient, that has not really been taken advantage of until now? Indeed, I think uh, that's beautifully put. The anti-10A agents already as far uh, as long ago as with low molecular heparin, which really are not selective, but they're dominantly anti-10A. They showed that very early treatment. Uh, is effective. The Fondaparinux with the selective 10A inhibitor was effective in the ACS setting. Then with Atlas, it was extended to 14 months post ACS, and now we're looking at people. The average person in Compass was seven years post MI, and uh, a 10A inhibitor there provided clear benefit. And not only clear benefit, the benefit started immediately. Really quite remarkable how rapidly the uh, event curves began to separate. So th the key step now is rivaroxaban is on the US market but to have the appropriate dosage available to replicate what you found in the Compass trial? Indeed, I think now it's a time for regulators and they'll make their own decisions and they have a role to play so I don't want to preempt whatever they say uh, but uh, given the strength and the consistency of the results uh, I, I suspect the regulators will look very favorably at this and try and make these benefits available for people around the world and Americans as rapidly as possible.